everybody. So as you saw in the thumbnail, we're putting giggle gas or nitrous on the dart. So I want to give a shout out to a uh, buddy of mine, Carl, for uh, helping me out with a couple of nitrous bottles and some miscellaneous uh, nitrous stuff, which you'll see in a couple of pics here. So shout out, Carl, to you. Thank you very much uh, for these items. Um, so guys, uh, let's kind of jump right into the video of, uh, you know, putting nitrous onto the car. So I'm just going to run a, uh, a hunter shot. Um, being that this is a stock bottom end uh, Dodge Magnum, you know, 5.9. So, uh, you know, it's got cast pistons, cast crank and all that. So uh, we're only going to run a hunter shot on it. Uh, car's been a best of 1220, normally aspirated. So we're going to see if we can get this thing down to the, let's say, an 1120. See if we can knock a second off of it with the... Uh, with the giggle gas here and just have a little fun. We're only gonna run the, the nitrous for like the drag and drive events. I'm not gonna run it for bracket racing or anything. Uh, just for the, just for like I said, uh, like hot red drag week for sick week, you know, those types of events. Um, I'm just gonna run it for those, just for the heck of it. Just because, why not? Um, you know, so it's supposed to be the fastest street cars, right? So let's let's be a quicker street car. Uh, maybe not the fastest, but at least be quick. Anyway, guys, let's jump right into the video and uh, let's start you know, hooking up all the nitro stuff. All right, guys, so one of the things I'm gonna do is because I'm running nitrous and according to the sheet, it needs to have eight PSI to the carburetor. So my mechanical fuel pump is an eight PSI fuel pump max. So I do not really need the regulator uh, because I need to run the eight PSI for the nitro system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the regulator. I normally run seven PSI anyway, so it's not really a big deal to get rid of this. Um, I know several people run at six PSI, right, for the normal carburetor, but being that we'll be running the nitrous, we'll set it uh, for 8 PSI because that's like I said what the pump is basically uh, rated for is 8 PSI. Uh, it is a high volume Carter uh, fuel pump, um, you know mechanical, so it should keep up the volume without a problem. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and disconnect the lines and I have a T I need to put in here um, and another fitting so then I can run a fuel line over to the uh, nitrous solenoid. But like I said, I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up real quick. Well, guys, I started to do the fuel system, right, changes, you know, so that way I could put this onto the fuel rail and this would go to the nitrous solenoid. But then, you know, I was like, you know what, I wonder if I'm going to have clearance issues, you know, with uh, this plate that I got, um, you know, with some solenoids and stuff. So I remember, right, I purchased this stuff uh, locally from a guy, um, very inexpensive, and... You know, this uh, this is where I have my ignition coil back here. And you can see, you know, this plate would interfere with the coil. And then the bigger problem is my radiator hose. It's obviously going to interfere with, you know, the, the radiator hose here. So what I'm probably going to do is not use this nitrous exp express plate that, you know, I bought, you know, with all this other stuff. Because um, it's probably not going to work. And what I think I'm going to do is do a side mount, make a side mount plate over here. Uh, that way I can mount the solenoids probably right here on the side um, is what I'm thinking. So uh, I'll probably mock something up out of cardboard, you know, and see if it works. And I'll have to set the carburetor back on. But, uh, you know, this, you know, is going to go on right here to the fuel rail. Um, and then... Uh, Basically, you know, I'll have the few two fuel, you know, the fuel solenoid and the nitrous solenoid most likely like this. And I'll probably buy it, you know, the nitrous line that I can disconnect instead of using the hard lines, use the braided steel, uh, make it easier and then run some sort of a, a purge line, you know, you know, up here and then up to the cowl and out. Um, you know, because right here is where the wiper squirter would be. So I don't know if I can, you know, basically run a a brake hose up here and then you know just have it spray out for example so we'll have to play around with a couple of ideas but uh, let me set the carburetor back on 
and uh, see what we can do here to make this work. All right, guys, so what I've come up with so far is I've got, you know, the fuel system kind of set up here. You can see I put the carburetor back on. And what I did is I've got a 90 degree here, um, female to female. And then I've got, you know, this T in here, which is a three-way male. And then, you know, I've got my fuel line hooked up here um, from the mechanical fuel pump comes up. And then it feeds into the fuel rail for the carburetor, right? Primaries and secondaries. And then it also feeds nitrous solenoid. And so what I'll be able to do is get a braided line and basically run it from here through, you know, this location right to the front of the carburetor and uh, make the connection. So the only thing I'll need to do is probably turn this little brass fitting upward a little bit so it'll go up and over the fuel line right there or underneath it, whichever way I got to go. Um, so then we can tie, like I said, into the, the front, you know, fuel. And then what I'll do for the back, now this is going to be changed up quite a bit. This is the way the previous owner had this uh, all connected. But basically what I'm going to do is get rid of this. We're going to mount it, you know, right about here like so. And that way I've got a straight shot to the back, you know, plate. And then I can do my nitrous into the back of the plate. I'm going to take this perch solenoid, flip it over to this side. Um, so then I can do my purge. And then, you know, the wiring will all go, you know, towards in the car. So I can take this wiring then, connect it all to this wire, run it in the car, and then wire up, you know, the nitrous controller as well. But the one thing I, you know, you can see here, you know, the previous owner had looks like, um, I'm gonna assume two tanks coming in. Uh, I, I don't know why you wouldn't otherwise. These solenoids, you know, are only rated for like 250 horse, one of these being a purge. He had it set up for purge and one for nitrous. So, um, yeah, so I honestly don't know why he's got this set up, you know, the way he's got it. But anyway, uh, you can see the pretty much every looks brand new. Um, you know, the guy told me he never ran it on nitrous, so we'll find out. But uh, I'm going to rip all this apart. Uh, I'm going to flip this solenoid over to this side. Uh, that way, this will be the in, you know, and then the out will be coming out this direction. You know, we'll plug up uh, this hole. Um, we won't be using that fitting, or I may not be using this fitting, or I'll be using this one, probably not this one. But anyway, let me go ahead and, you know, and I can then make up one simple bracket that comes out for this solenoid, you know, to support it. And then I'll make a bracket for this solenoid to support it. Um, one bracket, you know, and we'll see what we can, uh, what we can come up with here. So now that you kind of see what I think I'm going to do, let me go see if we can actually do it. All right, guys, so what I've done is made a paper template right here. Um, here, I'll just take it off real quick. You can see, very simple. So what I'm going to do is slip that up there like so. And the idea is, you know, we'll fasten it to the solenoid. There's two screws. Um, you know, that are machined in here, or, you know, so that I can put two screws in. And then, you know, we'll bolt it here to the carburetor base and it'll help, you know, support all this. All right, guys, so we've got this first bracket made. You can see it fits in here pretty good. Um, the solenoid is bolted, you know, or fastened at the bottom here. Uh, I'm even gonna remove a little bit of this excess material. Um, but otherwise, you know, you can see this is nice and, now granted the carburetor's not bolted down, but you know, this is, you know, pretty rigid setup. You know, the solenoid's very well supported, so the fuel lines are very well supported. You know, so yeah, this turned out pretty good. I gotta turn this up and still seal it. But you know, now my dash three line, you know, should sneak over to here and be able to, you know, attach to the plate. So now we need to go back to this you know, create this uh, back one. All right, guys, so here we're at. Again, we've got the fuel side all plumbed up. You can see also now I've got the braided line actually installed. Um, so this is a 3AN uh, going into the nitrous plate. And then there's a 4AN fitting here, which you can see basically I've got a 90 and a 90. So that way I've got a nice transition fuel in fuel out, you know, going to the nitrous plate. 
Um, the wires are just hanging here right now. I need to wire everything yet. And then on the nitrous side, uh, this will be the purge solenoid. Now I'll run a purge out here somewhere. Um, and then here's the actual uh, nitrous solenoid uh, sending the nitrous into the engine. Um, so you can see again, I've got a stainless line plumbed. Uh, again, 4 a.m. here, 3 a.m. at the plate. Um, and then you can see we've got kind of the adapters and this is just uh, going to be uh, a plug. What I want to do is get a, a 4 a.m. 90 here. So that way when I, you know, hook up the nitrous line that goes to the back of the vehicle, you know, we can hook it like this and then I'll kind of route it here and then, you know, down under the car and back. Instead of trying to do something like this, you know, and have it go, you know, on like this and have a, a bend in it and then go down. I think I want to keep it a little cleaner and just have it go straight back. So I need to order a, a 4 a.m., uh, you know, female here. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, female to a male, so that way I can you know, hook up this line. You can see just a simple bracket uh, attached uh, to the carburetor. Um, again, a simple bracket bent down. One thing I need to do is I want to cut this out a little bit because um, I want to put the wires here, and you know the wires are pretty tight between here and here. I don't need them to short out, uh, ground out, anything like that. I am going to heat shrink all this, but I do want to create a cutout here so I can, you know, go down and then, you know, they've got some, some room to, uh, to move. And then we'll go into the wiring aspect of it. I still need to hook up the switch on the other side, the wide open throttle switch. Um, so once I, you know, make this last change to this plate, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put Loctite, blue Loctite on all these fittings, um, put uh, blue Loctite on the fasteners below to hold the solenoids to this. And then, you know, we'll put the jets back in, um, you know, we'll put uh, new gaskets on the, uh, on the plate between the intake manifold and the carburetor, you know, and get all this, all this sealed up, um, you know, for the final time. That way I can concentrate on just the wiring next. And like I said, I still need to do the micro switch over there. Um, and then the wiring will come around, you know, and join this wiring as well. So that's kind of a quick update where we're at. All right guys, so I've got uh, these all done up now permanently. Um, so basically what I used is uh, some Loctite blue thread locker. That's what the, uh, they say to use on the threads uh, for all the solenoids, you know, the fittings into the solenoids. Uh, in fact, you know, they even give you this little tube if you buy a new Nitrous Express kit. Uh, a buddy of mine actually gave me this with some other stuff. But uh, this is what you're supposed to use on the fittings to seal them all up. So that's what I've done um, with some thread locker. All right, guys, so I made up a bracket to mount up my wide open throttle switch to activate the Nitrous. Um, so what I did is I put a little bend in the arm here uh, so basically when it hits this, you know, it doesn't hit the tip of it, right? It kind of hits the curb there and, you know, pushes it down. Um, so now you can see, and here, that it activates and deactivates the nitrous. So it's just a simple piece of scrap aluminum, and I'll take a couple pictures, and I basically bent it, uh, you know, slotted a hole here, um, so I drilled a hole and then took a round file and filed it a little bit more to give me a little bit more room so I can adjust it forward or backward. I've got it all the way forward at this point. I still need to hook up the throttle um, linkage. And uh, basically now what I can do is put new gaskets on, uh, tighten the carburetor down for good, uh, put the nitrous solenoids on the other side, bolt them on for good, and then we can start wiring this thing up. I still need to mount the bottle and run the nitrous line to the front, uh, which is probably what we'll do next once I take care of this. All right, guys, so I've been trying to figure out how I'm gonna mount the nitrous tank. And not, mounting the tank itself isn't too hard, but what's underneath there is the difficult part because all underneath here in this area is my fuel tank. So I just can't stick holes over here and here 
and you know mount the nitrous tank because I'll be drilling through the fuel tank. Um, and if you notice like those divots, right? That's where basically my rear rail goes right up through there. It's a couple inches wide, um, you know, so I can, I need to be on kind of that side of those divots, if you will, those spot welds. Um, so this, you know, location and this location, right, will be in between the two rails. And then I can mount, you know, it on the other side of the rail. So what I'm going to do is put in some nut zerts. Um, so that way I can just, you know, tighten those up. Uh, you know, the brackets uh, to hold the tank in place. But then what I'll need to do is I can't go straight down um, because again, that's where my rear rail is. So I'm gonna have to kind of put it right over in that general area closer to the, if you will, that uh, little contour and then kind of run it, you know, to the front of the vehicle. So that's what we're gonna do now. So let me go ahead and drill a few walls. Um, hope that we don't hit anything and uh, we'll pop these nut zerts in put those brackets in and then we'll drill a hole and run the line. Here's just another visual guys. You can see the tall bracket goes in the front, short bracket in the back. But again, you can see spot weld right where my spot welds are and how I'm kind of straddling the rail. You know, these, this one will be in more in the middle of the rail. That one will be on the outside of the rail. Same with this one. Um, and then, like I said, we'll have to somewhere in this area, whoops, probably somewhere in that area, right in here, drill a hole, um, you know, for the nitrous line to go through and then route it to the front. All right, guys, as you can see, the bottle's installed. Um, I don't know if you can see very good, but basically right there is where I've got the grommet going through, uh, the body grommet. Um, and then the line basically just follows along the fuel line to the front. Um, let me walk around to the other side of the car here. Follows the fuel line and then basically it comes up, you know, under here. You can see then it's basically right into the nitrous solenoid. So that's kind of how we've got this all routed. Uh, everything's out of the way. So what I need to do now is I need to do a purge out um, here and I still need to wire this all up. Um, so I've got a Nitrous outlet, nitrous outlet, wind max controller I'm going to be wiring up. Basically, I only need to wire up five wires. Um, power and ground, and then, you know, to activate the uh, the, the solenoids through a relay. These are, uh, if I was doing retard um, and a uh, tack signal, which I'm not going to be doing. So, basically, five wires. Should be pretty simple. Um, and then I need to wire up a purge solenoid as well. But what I need to make next is a bracket. So where I'm going to be mounting all this up is right here on the side of the shifter. Um, so right now this is my line lock switch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this bracket extend out and then I'll put the purge button in the middle and then I'll do the activate button back here, for example. So that way I've got, you know, the all the switches easy to uh, reach when I go ahead and do this. So this is my sketchy drawing. So basically, right, I've got the carburetor, a wide open throttle switch. I've got my fuel solenoid. I've got my nitrous solenoid, my purge solenoid. I have an auxiliary, auxiliary fuel block, fuse block that is uh, on the passenger side um, under the dash. So I will need to install a relay as part of this all wiring. Um, here's my shifter and what, you know, as, as you guys saw earlier, right? Here's my switch panel. Basically, it's gonna be like this. Here's my line lock. This will be my, my uh, arm for the nitrous and this will be my purge for the nitrous. I started doing a little pre-wiring here as well. So uh, basically I'm gonna have 12 volts coming in from my auxiliary panel. It's gonna feed you know, my arm switch. Um, then it will also feed the purge. It will also feed the wind max, um, you know, and then we will also feed up to the relay. Uh, from there, um, you know, the re I also need to run a blue wire, you know, use the blue wire, I should say, of the wind max, um, feed it up to a relay, uh, ignore the black, that's not correct. 
Um, basically, you know, this output here goes to my nitrous on my fuel solenoid. Um, and then there's another wire, I believe it's the white, uh, will also um, actually goes to this part of the relay here, not flat going to ground. Um, so this is my kind of my setup that I'm trying to do right now. Uh, so again, you can see my switch here, my active. I've got a couple of long wires rigged up here. Um, so that way I can take one of them up to the relay. One of them, I'm going to have a long wire. You can see I kind of have a couple of uh, connectors here on my Winmax. So what I'm going to do is I'll have a couple of long wires coming out um, from the shifter assembly. And what I can do is just plug it in. You know, I can, you know, hold the Winmax in the driver's seat, you know, make some changes, put it back down. Then when I'm, the nitrous is not in use, I can unplug this. I can push the wiring all up underneath the shifter because there's nothing... It's just a big open space and I can show you that what I mean. Garage is a disaster. By the way, um, what I do is I like to get wiring harnesses from the junkyard during the all you can pull day that we have a couple of times a year. And these make great uh, use, you know, getting these harnesses to wire stuff up. And I'm going over to the car. You can see you know, I've got a lot of room under the shifter here where I can just push that wiring underneath there. There's nothing mechanical, you know, for it to really rub on or chafe on. So when I use the Winmax, I can just basically run the run the wiring through here. I'll connect it and do the connections out here. And then I can just push it all underneath when it's not in use. Um, so right now the car is a bit of a disaster. So the other thing I've done is uh, I created a wiring harness here for the wide open throttle switch. So the uh, black wire will be 12 volts. Um, the blue wire here, this is what's nice about using that wiring harnesses, right? From right there is that, you know, not every wire is red or blue or, you know, yellow, you know, the solid colors you can buy. What's nice is you can see I've got like white with black tracer, white with blue tracer. So when I, you know, un under the car, I can remember, hey, you know, white with black tracer here, that will be 12 volt power. You know, I can make the connection under the dash to my uh, 12 volt source. And then this white with blue wire will actually go to the Winmax controller. So when it sees wide open throttle, right, then it will basically um, trigger the relay. And then, you know, we'll get power to the solenoids and magic happens. All right, guys. So I probably should have showed a little bit more of this, but essentially here are my two red wires uh, coming down, um, you know, with the diode in it. Uh, and so I ran the red wire with one of the, with the nitrous blue wire and tied those together. Heat shrunk them and put a connector on it and ran it through the bulkhead here. And then you'll see a single wire here that is for the purge solenoid. Uh, I grounded all three of them together. I don't know if you can see down here. Should have covered these wires up, but there is, you know, a red and two blues there. Um, and I grounded that to the intake manifold. Um, so now we should be able to fire these suckers up and hear them click. Um, once I get the controller connected and we can, you know, hit the wide open throttle switch on the other side and hear it. We'll go around there real quick because the wide open throttle switch, you know, you can see I've got my wires connected. I've got it routed over again into that same bulkhead area. Um, you know, a couple of zip ties to hold it to the throttle cable. So the wiring and everything is out of the way. So here's my under dash and my auxiliary, you know, fuse panel. Um, yes, I'm going to tie all these wires up and, you know, zip tie them together so it's nice and clean. Uh, I've got some conduit, you know, like this plastic stuff I can put over the wires here to help protect them. Um, but I'm showing you what the raw looks like. So you can see here's my wide open throttle switch power. Here's my, you know, power to my relay. Here is, you know, power um, to the uh, nitrous uh, setup going basically all the way back to the shifter. 
Um, so what happens is, is this blue wire um, comes out of the Winmax controller and provides ground to the relay. Uh, basically, this wire here, you know, um, sees a power signal to the relay. Uh, this is actually power out of the relay. And then you can, this is where I made the connection um, to the solenoids so that will power them up. So a very simple setup, and this one's not used in the relay. Uh, so essentially, uh, and this wire here, okay, this is for my purge solenoid. So I've got a single wire, you know, when I hit the little button, it'll go, pss, 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 right, makes the little purge sounds. So I got to clean all this up, make it look nice. And then once I get all that tidied up under the dash, we'll put the carpet back down and everything. And then I've got all these wires here that basically I need to uh, run. Um, and then, you know, make my connections underneath the shifter, you know, housing there. Um, you know, basically uh, make my final connections here. I'll heat shrink this really nice. Um, put connectors on all this. So that way, uh, when I plug in the Winmax controller, you know, we can give this a try and see how this all works out. All right, guys, so we've got everything wired up. You can see right here, this is my, actually my line lock. This is the purge solenoid. And we'll go out there and I'll have my wife push up the button in a little bit and uh, I'll walk outside and check it. And this is the arm switch for the nitrous. And you can see here is the Winmax controller. It is programmed and uh, it's showing 0% TPS right now. So basically I've got this uh, set up for the, uh, um, for the uh, micro switch. So once it hits, sees 100%, then it will kick on the nitrous. Um, so it, like I said, it's currently armed. Unfortunately, this is not a progressive controller. So in other words, once it sees wide open throttle, right, it's going to see whatever the jet settings are at, and it's going to run it for the entire time frame. It's not going to turn off, you know, after X amount of time. This is basically an all or nothing controller. So coming out here, if we hit the micro switch, you will hear the solenoids kick on. So both the fuel and nitrous solenoids are engaging. And like I said, I'll, uh, I want I felt them both cause I can do that for the purge. I'll have to do that. Um, I have to, my wife push the, the, you know, purge solenoid button down and make sure I can feel it. And if I can, then I need to wrap my purge, you know, um, vent, you know, outside the hood here somewhere outside the hood here somewhere and uh, we'll be all set. All right guys, well here is my very simple nitrous purge line set up. So what I've done is taken some of this uh, copper and ICOP, you know, brake style uh, line, um, you know, just uh, did a flare on it, used a brake fitting, put it in here. Um, yes, it is a little loose. Um, you know, but again, it's meant to be a purge, not to, meant to be perfect. Um, what I may do is maybe what I'll look for is that, uh, maybe I'll go to my local hardware store, get a, uh, a fitting here, right? Um, you know, that slips on this, you know, when you tighten it, right, it clamps around it and then it, you know, goes into this. Um, I can't think of what it is right now, but you know, something a little, uh, a little better, you know, for uh, a fitting, but as you can see, this is definitely not, you know, bottoming out in there. Um, but anyway, I put a grommet here um, where this goes. This is for the wiper uh, washer uh, deal. And basically I crimped this end down and I'll pull this out in a second, crimped it down so it will fit up between here. So that way, you know, when I hit the you know, purge button, right? We'll get a little purge out of there um, and then we'll be ready to go. So what I'll do is because this is mainly for drag and drive events, I will take this out after, you know, I'm ready to go. Just put in a, a cap in here 
um, to keep it from getting any, you know, moisture or any contamination in the solenoid. And then, you know, when I get to the next track, we'll just simply plumb that back in and tighten it up and call it good. So that is my nitrous purge. Here you can see how I kind of crimped it down so it'll fit up between the, uh, the slats there. So guys, I think that pretty much does, you know, the nitrous setup in the dart, other than getting the tanks filled and actually testing it. Um, you know, so both tanks are empty. Uh, again, I want to thank uh, Carl for providing the tanks and a few miscellaneous things. Picked up a few other things off of uh, Facebook Marketplace and really for just a few hundred dollars, you know, I've got a, a complete nitrous setup with purge. Um, I got an extra fuel solenoid. Um, you know, I can take my purge solenoid if my nitrous solenoid goes bad and make that the nitrous solenoid and then just back purge that through the engine, which I really don't want to do. I'd rather have a, a true purge. But anyway, we are good to go for sick week um, or any future event that I want to run nitrous. Um, you know, so we'll see uh, what this runs uh, on a hundred shot. Uh, I'm thinking it'll put me down. You know, it should pull. A, a sh it should put me one second quicker. So my best is being a 1220. I'm thinking I should be in that 1120 area. Thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next upload. Have a great day in your shop, and uh, we'll, hopefully we'll see you at a future event. Um, anyway, see y'all later.